eventually a huge spacecraft would come to our region, regardless of whether you think we're being visited or not right now. East of the Rockies, Joseph in Toronto, Canada. Go ahead, Joseph. Hey, guys. I just wanted to say, first off, yeah, uh, Richard is uh, talking about free energy, and, uh, you know, we're running commercials in Ontario calling Shine On in a solar energy, and uh, we're investing heavily in that, and we have a heavy uh, investment in Samsung with um, wind power. But you also have to have a diverse uh, market. So we're investing in consumer, or, uh, natural gas. We're also investing still in nuclear. And um, and what does this have to do with Elodine? Well, you know, like, I guess, you know, that's just one thing I wanted to touch upon. You also talked about the Middle East. More in, The Middle East right now is succeeding. And thank you to Hillary Clinton, Obama the United Nations, the Security Council, because they have allowed, and other three or 30 other nations in the world have allowed the Middle East now finally to stand up and say we want freedom. Okay, there's your political stand. But just questions on Comet Elanine, west of the Rockies. Hello? Hello? Go ahead, Morgan. Hey, guys. So I personally think that we are the complete representation of um, evolution and that we are the highest form. But because we think we're so high, we think we can drive around in our luxury cars and just ruin what what I believe we're, we're living on heaven on earth and, and this is heaven and that we're just in – I mean, there's no way to say exactly what we are and why we're here, and that the only way to find it is to be free of all of our material possessions, and that, you know, if this is a, a god ship or an alien ship coming to point us or to destroy us, which I don't think it would unless we're living in a devil realm or a hell realm, which many of us are, and we're, we're, we are leading ourselves into hell. I mean, with all the carbon that we're emitting, just look at, like, I believe it's um, Jupiter. I could be wrong. It might be Mercury. But their planet is full of carbon, and guess what they have? 600, mi- 600 degree temperatures solar storms and just huge storms that will wipe out everything in their path. Do we want to live on a planet like that? Well, no. keep in mind, though, they're a little closer to their sun than we are. Much closer. See, what people need to understand is we are living in an artificially enforced existence. We have a glass ceiling over us. We have been enforced to use fossil fuels, hydrocarbons, all kinds of very stupid things that are destroying the planet, if we were allowed the actual hyperdimensional physics that it was intended to, to have us function, none of this would be going on. This would be heaven on earth. It's artificially kept from being heaven. And ancestors, maybe our ancestors, in fact, are trying to show us the proper route, the proper way in time to save the earth before we kill it ourselves. Next up, we go to Joe in Cypress, Texas. Welcome to the program, Joe. Go ahead. Richard, you're 100% correct about them destroying the space station. It's what they did to the Titan Apollo project. It's what they did to the SR-71. These things have a useful lifespan to fill in a, a requirement for the elite to build certain items. And in this case, it's a time travel machine. Are you familiar with the einstein Godel model of rotational universe? Yes. Read my article called Federally Funded Frankenscience. It's posted. Send me a link on Enterprise, okay? Yeah. Uh, Federally Funded Frankenscience. It's posted at Canada Free Press. It's one of a 10 article series on time travel. You'll flip. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Woo, there he goes. (laughs) He beamed up. So, November, they will tell the astronauts, come home. 
Well, what's interesting that happens in November, and I find the coincidence, again, more coincidence, eerie. On November 11th, 11-11-11, Elanine aligns with the Earth, with Mercury, and Venus, all in an absolutely straight line with tenths of a degree. A couple, three days later, around the 23rd, I think, it aligns with Earth and the Sun. If there is a hyperdimensional generator on board this thing, if that's what's creating this weird geometry in the uh, solar wind CME stream that we're seeing, um, then those alignment dates could, in fact, be very interesting and important in the physics, and there may be reasons in the ritual. Some of these guys are obvious ritualists. Why they would want to bring folks down and have them here on Earth and not in the space station when those key dates come, and who knows what might happen. I have, as as remember that line in Star Wars where Luke says, "I have a bad feeling about this." I don't have a fuzzy, warm feeling about abandoning something that's taken us ten years and a hundred billion dollars to build just because of some damn pump in a booster in a rocket that has worked incredibly well hundreds of times. Next up, we go to Robert in L.A. You're on Coast to Coast. Hey, Robert, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, I, was, I was calling in to, to ask them about the, the ideas about the New Jerusalem and the Bible and the dimensions that are given in the Bible, and if that could even correlate with the, the shape of the lean coming this way. If you think most people might think that that could be the New Jerusalem coming this way or or the kingdom of God. Are you familiar with that? Well, really. I don't think it'll be that. I wouldn't worry about that too much. Now, is the comet the blue star? Richard? Well, I mean, that's one possibility. Remember, I said earlier we're looking at scenarios. I don't necessarily believe any of these individual possibilities, but I'm laying them out there so people can pick and choose. Something is going to happen. One of these sets of probabilities is going to take place. The numbers say this thing has been designed, sent to us, obviously for some reason. We don't know for certainty what the reason is yet. We Hopefully, by the end of November, when these last alignments take place, we will know a lot more than we do now. Richard C. Hoagland, our special guest. Let's take one more quick call. Ed in Detroit, squeeze you in. Go ahead. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, Eddie. Oh, this is Adam. Um, I got one question to clear up. There's a researcher named Alex Retrov. He's talking about the uh, researcher that discovered common element and lenoid element. He said that that's a fake researcher, and it's an acronym that stands for element coming from the constellation of Leo, National Institute of Defense, uh, um, extinction level event near ever near. Impact Nibiru. Okay, that's one thing I wouldn't worry about. That's the one thing that is on the Internet, that Comet LNN is going to be catastrophic. Richard says no. Well, it doesn't come anywhere closer than 22 million. 